Hi everybody and welcome. Today's project is going to be a shackle collar and I do like the shackle collars that I've made. Hi everybody and welcome. Today's project is going to be a quick release buckle collar. I am using a one inch rose gold quick release buckle as well as a one inch o-ring in rose gold. So for this project, the way I have my setup done, I don't know if there's a particular name for this setup, uh, but it's with the uh, quick release buckle and the o-ring together when you do the cow's hitches. I have a link below if you're not familiar with it, this setup, and it's a really short video on how to do that and to how to hook it up to your jig if you're not familiar. So for this project, the cords that I'm going to be using are, what I have my double cast hitch hooked up to is um, pink and fuchsia diamond, and that's 550 pericord. I'm also going to be using uh, pink, lavender pink, fuchsia, and those are all 550 pericord as well as uh, pink but this is glow in the dark so it's a little bit fatter than the regular cords but they are all 550 pericord so to set up my cords I'm going to loosen up my cow hitches just a little bit and I'm going to be adding the glow in the dark pink first and I'm going to go through these two cow's hitches with it. I'm going to try and loosen them up a little bit more because my pericord needle does not want to cooperate very well with this cord so I'm going to have to push it through without using my needle. So what you want to do is you just want to go right in between those two cow's hitches with it and go through one cow's hitch So you're just going to go through the two cow stitches just like that and then you're going to pull this cord um, to the middle to the top of your work. For the next three cords what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting them exactly in half and then we're going to mix them up and fuse them together. So I'm going to cut them in half real quick and then I'll show you how I fuse them together. So I have my cords here. I have two fuchsia now, two of the lavender pink, and then two of the pink. What I want to do is I'm going to take one of the fuchsias with one of the lavender pink, and I'll put those two together. Then I'm going to take one of the lavender pink with one of the pink and I'll fuse those together and then one of the pink with one of the fuchsia ones. Alright guys, so the way we're going to fuse our quartz together, and I know there's a bunch of different ways on how to do this. I've had trouble doing it other ways. This, this way seems the easiest for me, but what I like to do is I just like to get them both ends of my cords that I'm fusing together super hot um, and then just sticking them together. It seems to work the best for me and I haven't had any of my stuff come apart that I know of so I just like to go back and forth with my lighter and just make them super hot. Um, you can tell when the stuff is melting and then that's when you're going to want to stick them together and you just have to hold it there for a few seconds until it dries or hardens. Just like that and now I'm just going to like wait until that gets nice and hard and it only it's a few seconds maybe a half a minute and then so then that one's done 
and I'm going to do the rest of the cords that I put them in the groups together. The first cord that I'm going to be adding to this project is um, the, I have the half fuchsia and half lavender pink and that's the cord that I'm going to be adding first. And what I'm going to do here is I want to take the middle part, just make a loop, and what you're going to do is your best bet if you're working with these types of uh, buckles is loosen up your jig so you can take it off. So what you're going to do here is you take that folded end that you folded and you're going to slip it through the o-ring and the slit in the buckle. I'm going to push that through. And you can put it back on your jig. So now you have your loop down here. You're going to take your fuchsia and lavender cord and you're going to put that through the loop and pull that down. So once you get those cords through, um, you don't have to tighten it up just yet. I'm going to take my pink and lavender pink now cord. So this is the half pink, half lavender cord. And what you want to do, oops, what you'll do now is you're going to take your pink side and you're going to just go through this um, cow's hitch that you just made with the fuchsia and the lavender pink. And you're just going to pull that through and you're going to bring the middle of the two cords up to the top. Okay, so once you have all of your cords at the top and to the middle and it's nice and tight up there, you can roll up your ends. And I do suggest that if you have it um, using colored rubber bands for this project, it is a lot easier. Um, I guess visualize to, to know what you're grabbing at. Because we cut and um, split the cords and we fuse them together, uh, each end has got a different color. So unfortunately, like when you're working with the right cord, it's usually the same on the left, but it won't be anymore. So what I do uh, is, like this is the same cord right here, the fuchsia and the lavender pink. This is the top cord. I have a blue rubber band around both of those. The next cord uh, down is pink and the lavender and I have red rubber bands on those. And that's just visual to help me know, okay, if I'm working this one, I gotta be working the next, the other red one. If you don't have rubber bands, you could like um, maybe I use some string to tie up your bundles with or uh, d d tape might work. I'm trying to think of some ideas um, but you just want to, if you're not working like that, you just want to be aware of what is going where. And for me, the, the colored rubber bands seem to work the best and they're very, very, very inexpensive. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, and I got my ends rolled up, I will be adding the glass cord in a minute. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting on my right side. And I'm going to be starting with the pink and fuchsia diamond, and I'll just call it the diamond cord. So I'm going to be working with the diamond on my right side. And what you want to do here is you want to go underneath this first cord right here on your right, right up the middle over the second cord on your left. Next, you're going to take your diamond on the left side. You're going to go underneath the cord that you just worked. You're going to go underneath this first cord that's now on your left, right up the middle and over that second cord. 
Next I'm going to take my glow in the dark on my right side and I'm going to go underneath all of my work and come right up the middle. I have this loop on my right side, I'm going to go down that loop. Take my glow in the dark on the left side now and go underneath all my work right up the middle and then I'm going to go down that loop that I have right here on my left side. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the last cord that we still have. Uh, mine is the fuchsia and pink and we are going to I'm going to be taking my fuchsia side and what I want to do is I want to go underneath these two elongated cords right here of the diamond and pink fuchsia and I'm just going to go underneath that and bring it to the middle And then you just kind of want to put it up the middle. What I like to do is take a clothespin. I have a very small clothespin. So I have a small clothespin. I'm just going to pin it up there onto the, um, the O-ring just to hold it there for a moment. And I, I want it to be as in the middle as I can possibly get it. just like that. Next what you're going to want to do is you're going to find the cords that are next in line or on the outer edge that you haven't used yet. So for me it's going to be my red rubber bands. It's my lavender pink that is connected to my pink. And they're the ones that are on the outer side of the collar. You want to find these two horizontal diamond pieces. And I'm going to take that cord on my right side, which is my lavender pink, but it's also my red rubber band. So I'm going to take my red rubber band cord and I'm going to go around these two horizontal pieces and then right, right up the middle. So go over and around and then you can drape it down. Next I'm going to take the other side of that cord which is the pink and my red rubber band and I will go over those two horizontal pieces in the middle and right up the middle. So I'm going to go over and around right up the middle and then I can drape that down. Next I'm going to take the next cord in line which is my fuchsia and my lavender pink and it's the blue rubber band. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go on the outer side of this lavender pink cord find those two horizontal cords again. I'm going to go around and then right up in between this lavender pink and my working cord. So take the fuchsia on your right, go over and around and up. You can drape that down. Go on the opposite side now you're going to be all the way over from your pink cord. You're going to take your lavender pink, the, which is my, my blue rubber band, and I'm going to go over those two horizontal cords, and I'm going to come up the right side of my working cord, which will be in between the pink and my working cord. So go over and around and up and down. You just drape that down. And actually you can just tighten it up now. 
Alright, once you have that tightened up, what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, you have these two top cords right here, the pink and the fuchsia cord. These are the cords that we just looped in. What we want to do now is we want to take these two cords, kind of bring them down a little bit, and then your pink and your fuchsia that is, sorry, your pink and your lavender pink that are coming right directly right out of the middle. We're going to put those up. And we're going to be rotating like that. Now that we've got this, the weave nice and tight, we are going to do the same weave again, but what we're going to do is we have the two top cords that are coming out of the very top. We're going to bring those down to our sides. The cord the two cords that are coming out directly in the middle, underneath those two that we dropped to the side, we're going to bring those up. We'll start off on the right side with the diamond. We're going to go underneath, right up the middle, over the second cord. Take the diamond on the left, go underneath that first the cord that you just worked. Go underneath the first cord right up the middle over. Take your glow in the dark on the right. You're going to go underneath your work right up the middle and then down that loop on the right. Take the one on the left now. You're going to go underneath your work right up the middle down that loop on the left. We're going to find the cords that are all the way to the left now. Mine are the pink and the fuchsia. We're going to find those two horizontal cords again. We're going to take the pink on the right. We're going to go over and around and right up the middle. We're going to take the fuchsia now on the left. We're going to go over those two horizontal cords, around them, and right up the middle. Now we're going to take the cords that are cu coming towards the sides. We're going to take the, um, the lavender pink and we're going to go all the way to the right. And we're going to go over those two horizontal cords and around and come up in between the pink and the lavender pink. And drape that down. We're going to go to the left now. And we're going to find the pink and we're going to go around those two horizontal cords and come up in between the pink and the fuchsia. Drape it down. Tighten it up. Once it's tight, we can start again. So we're going to take these two top cords and we're going to take them down to the sides. We're going to take those two cords that are underneath that, those, those two that we just took to the side and we're going to bring them up. And then we're going to start again. So I'm going to start on my right. Go underneath, right up the middle, over. Take the one on the left, go underneath, right up the middle, and then over. Take the glow in the dark on the right now, go underneath, right up the middle, down that loop on the right. Take the one on the left, maybe. Take the one on the left, go underneath the work, right up the middle, down that loop on the left. Go to your sides, which is lavender pink. You're going to go around those two horizontal cords, right up the middle and down. Take the pink on the other side, go around. 
and drape it down. Now you're going to take those two cords that are coming out of the sides again. We're going to go all the way to the right. We're going to take that fuchsia on the right. You're going to go around and right up in between the fuchsia and the lavender pink. Take the one on the left, which is lavender pink. And you're going to go around those two horizontal pieces up. You'll be on in the middle of the pink and lavender pink, and you're going to just tighten it up. Okay, so I've gone a few more down uh, to give you a bigger spot to look at, and you can see how the uh, pattern is forming in the middle where it's just rotating those colors. When you're working this, don't forget to always take those two top cords, put them to the sides, and then the cords that are directly underneath that are coming out of the middle, raise them up and then start your weave. I'm going to continue this weave all the way down my collar and when I get to the end I'll show you guys how I do my tie off and what it looks like when it's done. Okay guys, so I'm at the end of my collar and I can start weaving in these top cords and I'm going to be weaving in all the ones that are directly coming out of the top part of your collar the two that are coming out of the sides which are the glow in the dark and the pink fuchsia diamond those will be cut and melted where they are the way I'm going to weave these in because I want to keep the pattern going all the way to the end of the collar I'm going to take the two cords that are because I have it twisted around that are at the very top closest to my buckle I'm going to work those two first. I'll start on my right and what you're going to do with those two cords is you have a really tiny hole right here between the two cow stitches you're going to take both of those cords and put them through this hole So you're going to go right through that hole, bring it to the other side, and do the same for the other cord on your left. The next cord that you're going to work is you're going to just go right down to the next line of cords. Um, and what you're going to do there is you're going to take your one on your right. You have a small gap in between your work right here and this uh, cow's hitch on your right side. You're going to go through that gap and then you'll take the the next one in line for the left side and you'll do the same thing you'll go through that gap on the left side between your work and your cow's hitch and then for the last cord on your right side you're gonna take it and you're gonna go to the right of the cord that you just put through that hole on your right side just go towards the right with it of that cord and pull that through and do the same on the left just go to the left Okay, once you have that part done, we can start to cut and burn everything or melt everything. I like to start on my sides and I'm going to cut about a quarter of the way up of an inch or so, maybe a little bit shorter. I like to fray them out and then I'm going to start with the one on the top. I'm going to melt it. Try not to let it catch on fire. It does happen. And then I'm just going to squish that down. Do the same for the bottom one. Squish that down. I'll do the same for the opposite side. Once you have those two sides done, we can start on these middle cords. And what I'm going to start with is you have two cords right directly on the bottom. I'm going to start with those two cords. Then I'll work my way up to the next cords that are in line. And then I will do those top cords. I will cut and burn everything the way I have been. 
I'm going to start with the one on the bottom. I will hold these other cores out of the way. That's why I do them one at a time so I can do that. You can also bend back your buckle a little bit to give you some extra room. I'm going to melt it. And then I will squish it down. I'll do the one on the opposite side and then work my way up. Alright, so once you have all of that nice and melted and in place, you can use your collar the way it is. That is quite alright. But I do like to put um, Gorilla Glue on my ends that I just melted. It's just an extra security to make sure that they don't come apart. A lot of people don't use the Gorilla Glue and I've bought collars that don't use the Gorilla Glue and I've had them for over a year now. So it, it's up to you what you want to do. But because I sell my collars and I worry too much probably, I um, do this extra security. So what I'm going to do, and I've been having a hard time with my glue, I think I need a new cap or something. I'm going to buy a new one. But I like to smear it around, so I'll put, a little bit goes a long way. I should have said that. A little bit goes a very long way with this stuff. And you're just going to want to put it on the ends of where you melted everything. And you want to smear it around. You also want to put a little bit on your caps on both sides. So once I get this taken care of, I'll let it dry. And then I'll show you guys what the finished result looks like. 